Welcome to creating your first form with Acrobat, and welcome to PDFscripting.com. This is a beginner's introduction to using Acrobat to create fillable interactive forms. Our site, PDFscripting.com, isn't about the form creation process per se. It's about all the various scripting and programming activities that are used to make Acrobat and PDF work for you. Interactive forms are an important part of this and a great place to start. In this presentation, I'll cover the steps of the form creation process first and then demonstrate the process using a real form that I've designed. Really, I'll show two slightly different variations on the same creation process, one for Acrobat 8 and earlier, and one for Acrobat 9. In Acrobat 9, Adobe made some changes to the form's methodology. There is a minimum set of tools you need to make a PDF form. If you are using Acrobat 8 or earlier, you need to have the Acrobat Professional variation. Professional is the only Acrobat variation that has all of the tools for making forms. If you've upgraded to version 9 of Acrobat, then you can use either Acrobat Standard or Acrobat Professional, but Professional is still the best tool. Besides the form tools built into Acrobat Professional, you'll also need some kind of document design tool. Acrobat is not a document design tool. The best way to describe Acrobat is that it's a document finishing tool. The design itself has to come from somewhere else. And this is the first step in the process. Step number one, design your form. If you are starting from scratch, then the best thing to do is to draw out your form design on paper so that you have a good idea of what the form will look like and you'll know what all the different parts of the form will be and how they'll be organized. Then, you'll need to implement the design in a document creation tool. Some of the easier to use tools are Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. I've used both of these. Probably the best tool is Adobe InDesign. This is a very sophisticated professional layout tool. It is not easy to use and may require some special training. But there are many other tools you could use besides these, for example, FrameMaker, anything that can be used to create a document. Usually, though, you won't be starting from scratch. You'll already have the form design in some kind of format, HTML, Word, or even just a paper form. In this case, you can often use what you already have, only making a few changes so that the form is suitable to conversion to PDF. If necessary, you can always re-enter the design into a better design tool. If you have an existing paper form or a printout of your form, you can even scan it directly into Acrobat without ever putting it into another design tool. But it's not the best methodology. But really, you can use just about any kind of document design tool to create your form. The whole idea is to get your form design into a document format that can then be converted into PDF. So, use whatever you feel comfortable with. Once you're happy with the design, it's time for step two, converting it into a PDF. This conversion is simply taking and converting the look of the form, the graphical elements of the form, into a PDF. At this point, there are no active parts of the form. All of the Adobe tools, like InDesign, come with built-in intelligent conversions to PDF. Acrobat Professional comes with converters for all of the popular document formats, things like Word and PowerPoint, FrameMaker. If there is not a specific converter for your file format, then Acrobat also comes with a print driver that can be used to print any format into PDF. This is less optimal, but you can still do it. If you're not happy with the Acrobat conversion, there are several third-party conversion tools. Some of these are even free. You'll have to do an internet search to find out what these are. If you have a paper form, then you can scan it directly into Acrobat without any other tools. And once the document is in Acrobat, you can run OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, on the form so that the text is active. There is, however, a problem with scanned documents. Or it's more of a difficulty. Scan documents are only a single page sized bitmap or image. They are a picture of the form rather than a true electronic representation of the form. They are bigger and more difficult to work with 
and don't look as nice as a PDF that was converted from a real electronic form. But the point is that there are lots of different options for getting your form design into a PDF. You might have to do this a few times. For me, I typically find details here and there on the form that need to be changed. So I'll go back to the original design, make a change, and then redo the conversion process. And this is another important point. The right way to drive this process is from the original document. Always make changes in the original document and then reconvert into PDF. Once the conversion is good, we're ready to move on to step three, adding fillable and interactive form fields to the PDF. And this is where Acrobat 8 and Acrobat 9 have some differences, but I'll get into the specifics later on in the presentation. Adding form fields can be a multi-step operation, and it often is. A good first step is to use the automatic form field recognition tool. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it's always a good idea. Auto form field recognition was added in Acrobat 8, and it was improved in Acrobat 9. So if you have an earlier version of Acrobat than 8, you won't be able to use auto form field recognition. This process is not perfect. The auto recognition is not going to catch everything. So you're going to have to go back and manually add or modify fields as necessary. Once you've added the fields, one of the most important parts of setting up the form is setting the field properties. These include things like the field's appearance and its name. The appearance properties are things like the kind of border, the border color, background color, and the font type. You'll also need to set up properties that control the field's behavior, but we'll get into those a bit later. The field's name, while it's not obvious, is one of the most important field properties. It's important for two reasons. First, if data is exported from the form, it's identified with the field's name. So if you want this text to be recognizable or mapped, to a particular name, you need to give each field a sensible, easy to identify name. Second, the field names are very important for scripting. In a script, the field's name can be used to organize how the data field is accessed, and it's also important to be able to quickly recognize and use field names in code. Names that are long and are cryptic can make scripting very, very difficult. You may find that after actually adding the form fields, that a design change is necessary. This isn't a problem. You can go back to the original document, make a change, then import those changes into the PDF without changing any of the form fields that have already been added to the PDF. And I'll show how this can be done in the demonstration. And now we're ready for step four, which is the final step. Adding form fields to the document makes the form fillable so that users can enter data into the form when it's displayed in Acrobat or Reader. But we can do much, much better than this. Form fields can be more than just fillable. They can be dynamic and interactive. The form can be set up to automatically validate the inner data, perform calculations, show pop-up warnings, hide and show parts of the form as necessary, and many, many more things that make the form more usable and make it fit better into an electronic document workflow. There are two basic ways to add behavior to a form. First, there is a large set of built-in behavioral settings that can be applied to a form field without any scripting. For more sophisticated behavior, we need to use JavaScript, which is Acrobat scripting language. And JavaScript is the primary focus of this website, www.pdfscripting.com. It's a big topic and we've created videos and example files to ease the beginner into using JavaScript and to promote the intermediate user to an advanced user. That ends the discussion part of this introduction. In the next video, we'll walk through the actual process with an example that I've written.